Greetings, good morning, good day, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Anissa Wilhelmstetter. I'm a creativity and creative change coach and the founder of Creative Change Coaching. In today's session, we will be doing another chapter in positive intelligence, looking closely at the navigate sage power and what it can do for you in your life to help you surpass those saboteurs. We have nine saboteurs and the head honcho, the judge. What are these? These are, we have been socialized. In learning to take care of ourselves in the world, we were taught certain ways of thinking, of feeling, of being with our feelings or not being with our feelings, of making assumptions, of taking things personally, for example. And we have internalized these teachings that were not quite authentic. They were useful at some point and no longer serve us. And we take those old tools, those old patterns of thinking and behavior and relating to all areas of our lives now, or to most or to one particular as an adult. And this gets in the way of us enjoying a full and prosperous life and achieving success in terms of well-being, excellent relationships, reaching our potential. So if you want to say yes to life, yes to yourself, yes to your potential, and yes to freedom, and yes to freedom of choice, then you wanna to learn to train your PQ brain. We do not have to live where our saboteurs are making our choices for us. So back in the driver's seat, reactivating our yes brain by connecting to our sage powers, which we will learn to do through games, we call games or practices. And we will do that here. We will also get in some, what is called PQ reps. So we will have pop-up PQ gyms where at opportune points, I will offer, and this can be done in 10 seconds, as little as 10 seconds, you can put in one, two, even three reps and doing at least 100 reps per day can change your life, according to scientist Shirzad Shamin. And there are testimonials, there is evidence in real life, anecdotal evidence to show this. They also do neuroimaging studies to show the changes in the brain when we activate this PQ brain, which is your yes brain meaning you surpass your saboteur in those moments and connect with your sage. And that is a colorful way of presenting this material. So the proof is in the pudding. Let's go into, I would like to share a slide, some slides as I take you through the navigate sage power and we will look at what it is, when it's needed, what gets in the way, and we will do some transformational journaling together, some inquiry. You will see the traditions of insight meditation and embodied awareness come together here as we train our brains to make the best choices. Talking about doing the next right thing, Navigate is the perfect topic because it's all about your inner compass. Let me share my screen. There we go. And to presentation view. Take a moment to arrive in this room. You can take in Breath and exhale. And just be here now. 
So welcome to your sage power. Navigate. We will look at when it's needed, what the saboteur says, a power practice and inquiry for insight. The five sage powers are empathize. We want to learn to empathize with ourselves and others, to explore with deep curiosity and interest, innovate for creative options to lead positive change, navigate among our options and choose the congruent path activate our intentions in order to generate results. So you can become a virtue connoisseur and learn to put your virtues into practice. When I discuss or showed you the slide on the sage powers, you would notice that they all in some way or other reference a virtue. Any one virtue can be referenced in a number of ways. And under any virtue, you can decide what values and other strengths you will add to that. For example, this is my personal virtue compass. I have wisdom as my true north. And we, when we accessing the sage, we are saying that wisdom is our most important virtue that we are leveraging. And wisdom informs all of these other virtues. We are aspiring self-mastery, so we're not controlled by our saboteurs. This takes courage. And we are bringing love to it, as you can see in empathy, for example. Courage, with courage and wisdom, we need curiosity. We need creativity. And I will show you how these are already in integrated into the sage powers. And we're doing it for justice, to do the right thing, so that everyone, including ourselves, have a fair chance of being honored and manifesting our potential. Transcendence means we bring hope and gratitude and all those wonderful things to the table. And here you can see I've done mine. I've labeled under wisdom, for example, creativity as one of my highest values. So navigate. The sage's power to navigate is by choosing between various paths and alternatives based on a consistent internal compass. The coordinates on this compass are your deeply held values or what gives your life a sense of meaning and purpose. If you keep navigating with this compass, your cumulative choices will generate the fulfillment that comes from living life in alignment with your ideals and principles. Now use your sage power to navigate when multiple parts are available, some of which may be more aligned than others with your sense of values, purpose or meaning. So you're weighing options. I could have put a scale here. Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? These things seem to be equally important, but I only have this amount of time and I need to decide. So this is when you need to know which is going to give you or add the highest value. Where can you add the highest value? Which is of these choices or paths that seem to be different? and seem to be in conflict, which is most aligned to my purpose and is most meaningful to me. So what is one of the operating questions we asked ourselves to remind ourselves that we wish to navigate based on our moral compass? What's important now? So what is the most important to thing to do in this moment instead of becoming overwhelmed by the choices and what you think you would lose if you choose the one over the other? 
we support ourselves. And instead of the downward spiral, we center with this question, what's important now? So navigation is needed when? Shirazad Shamin says, I often find people stuck since they can't chart a complete path from where they are to where they want to be in the long run. Similarly, many people think that the answer to the meaning of life will one day emerge with fanfare and fireworks. So people are searching outside in things and other people and activities and they think that's going to be, yeah, fanfare and fireworks. It will be revealed to them. Without the compass, we could take many steps that on their own might appear successful, but in the end could have us running in circles, chasing our own tail. A midlife crisis is a good example of this phenomena. So people are successful successful, then they have the house, the car, the trophy, husband or wife or partner, etc., etc., And life feels empty and meaningless. So all of these, to prevent these, we use navigation. And to promote a prosperous life. What gets in the way? Our most deeply held values and the things that bring meaning and people's purpose to our lives do not lie in the rational mind. So the rational mind gets in the way when it's not used in conjunction with our hearts. So they live, these values live in our hearts. We have a foul sense of right and wrong. It's not about rational arguments. And so when you connect your values and purpose in only a um, linear or rational way, they only have a superficial conceptual relationship that we have with these words. And that means that we live in our heads. The consequence is that there's little in action to support our values. So we're not living our values. We are not making choices in alignment with our truest intentions. And this compromises our sense of well being, mental, physical, emotional, psychological, and also success, true success. So we can acquire things, but we don't get that sense of achievement or fulfillment in the journey when we only have an intellectual understanding of our values. Meaning is a felt sense. For the sages navigation power to have a meaningful impact, there needs to be a deeper, more visceral connection and with the coordinates of the compass. They need to arouse emotion and inspire. This is what gives life energy. The sage's navigation function, this is what gets in the way. It's also susceptible to pollution from saboteurs, all of whom bring in their own biases. For example, the judge uses guilt and obligation as coordinates on the compass. And then depending on which of the accomplices, these nine sub judges, you would call them devil's advocate in a way, are at play and some are more than others in any particular person. So for me, I am a high achiever or I'm restless. Then we would have that judges accomplice getting in the way in their own particular way with their own thoughts, their own stories, their own rationale for why one I should choose this instead of that that is more meaningful. 
I love this quote by Martin Luther King that just says it all. What we're doing with navigation and compasses and living in a more heart aligned way. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. And this also reminds me of, you would have heard this probably, when people go on a diet, we can have the best intentions on a full stomach and then get to this moment where we are hungry or distracted or tired or angry or whatever. And there is some, a favorite food in abundance, whether it's ice cream or cake or what. What will we choose? Will we remember and how will we remember our values to help us make the best choice for us? The power game that can help is flash forward. When faced with a fork in the road, imagine yourself at the end of your life, looking back at the choices you are now facing from that vantage point. So if you have a choice in front of you to do or not to do, to eat or not to eat, to say or not to say, do you want to be a whistleblower or not? Or other choices that are weighty. And the smaller ones, like I said, to eat or not to eat. To eat now or not to eat now, right? To eat this instead of that. What to do? To work out or not to work out? To go to bed or not to? To wake up now or not to? To hit snooze or not to, right? So we train ourselves for those choice points and flash forward is what helps. What is the operating question? So when you go into this future and you look back at this choice point, do I turn up that video? Do I say this? Do I dismiss what? Do I just not get to this thing that I had thought or I have a sense is important or I know there's consequences if I don't? So in that future moment, you're looking back at this point. What did you wish you had chosen at this juncture? And I'm sure you look back at any moments and you wish at many moments that you had made different choices. So instead of just going in at the in with trance, letting the saboteurs choose for you, and then looking back and regretting afterwards, where hindsight is not serving you, we can lose foresight. We go forward, and then we to help us decide what to do in the present moment. So the reason this exercise works is that. At the end of our lives, many of the trivial saboteur related concerns fall away and are revealed as false. So the interests, the needs of the saboteur are false needs. And when we put things in right perspective, we see it for what it is. We shine a light and the fog lifts and we see clearly through the sage's eyes. We feel it the heart of a sage, the heart of a true champion. The things that stand out are those that are real, those that bring value, meaning, and purpose to our lives. So as we move into our practice now, you have a sense of compass, that there's a compass that's important, and here you are to calibrate your compass. We have pen and paper, something to write with, something to write on. I have a chisel there for the fun of it. Reminds me of always that icon, Michelangelo, the statue of David, this big square of marble, and we're chipping away. And that's what we're doing here. 
when we're looking at the saboteurs, we are chipping away at what gets in the way of our success, those thoughts, that behavior, everything that has been conditioned, that's just learning that we can unlearn or we can overcome through new learning and clear vision. The crayon, remember, to bring in the child. And then you have, we want to sit the more or less erect because we're doing journaling or it represents a state of mind of relaxed alertness. That's why you have the beach there. So in navigate, I love this term VIP, right? Very important person or purpose. It also for me represents virtues in practice. So we want to be wise. And this program represents this virtue of wisdom. That we want to be wise instead of ignorant. And here you can see your journal can take countless forms. One of the practices we do, it's useful to write then you're not trying to remember things. And when you see it in front of you, you have greater freedom to draw and scribble and bring in all of you, the creative side and your embodiment, your body to engage in your practice. Here you see my top or my virtues in practice, top five virtues. It's also called virtues in action. And that's why next to it, you have how you will put that virtue in practice or action. For example, wisdom, this is one way we are now putting it in practice. And another way is to play the flash forward exercise. Before going forward, I have said a lot and I think it's useful now to activate our PQ brain because maybe our Rational mind and intellectual mind has been a little too active, trying to take in, understand and connect. And maybe lots of judgment because it's new material. And maybe by now we're getting distracted. So PQ gym, welcome to this PQ gym. In my imaginary gym, I have a sign, a banner that says, Virius aquari undo, gather strength as we go. And it's in the doing that we get stronger in the practice. That's why we have daily practice. And in this one, we're going to do a two minute using the sense of touch mainly. In this PQ practice where we activate our yes brain. So we have a more embodied experience and the rational brain calms down, meaning the saboteurs get to calm down and we can connect to our wise brain, our yes brain, our PQ brain in a clearer way. So for two minutes, we're going to do it in bits. Approximately five PQ reps out of your daily hundred. Make yourself comfortable now. If you're sitting, you can sit erect, spine straight. If you're lying down, spine straight. It's unlikely you're walking right now, but generally if you're walking or busy with some other activity, maybe waiting for the tea to boil. Shoulders back, chest open. If you're sitting feet on the ground, Start noticing connection points, the feet on the ground, maybe hands on your lap, or things that are connected. If you're sitting in the seat, if you're against a backrest. And now we're gonna exhale. And inhale. And when you exhale, Notice you can exhale more fully and that you can breathe deep into the diaphragm. And with each exhale, you can relax just a little bit more. And now put your hands together 
almost like a prayer pose. For touch, our fingertips together with a little of pressure, enough that when you slide the fingertips, you can feel the ridges and the grooves. And now we're gonna gently move or slide the one hand down the other to the wrist and release and return like this. And if you're not watching the video, feel the fingertips, feel the fingerprints, and you're gonna remind yourself that you are unique. And slowly the one hand slides down the fingers of the other into the palm, feeling how that feels, feeling the textures, the temperatures, the wrist, raise and return, fingertips to fingertips. Now you reverse, the other hand will do the sliding. Fingertips feeling, textures, the grooves, the prints, the ridges down to the palms, up and the downs, the change in temperature to the wrist, release and up. Let's return and we will do this for three reps, three pairs of reps. So one hand down, down, down and up, reverse, down, up and then down and up down and up. One more set of reps, feeling your breath. You can I have your eyes open or closed as you wish for these exercises? And if your eyes are closed, you can open it now, return to the room. You can put one hand on your heart, or on your belly, or one hand on your heart and the other on your belly. And we take one or two breaths. And as you do this, notice the rise and fall of your chest. Thank you for your practice. And now that we have connected with our center. Let's look a little bit more now at the inquiry, right? What is one area of your work or life where you could use some true north guidance? Play the flash forward game to make authentic choices in the present moment, choices that are aligned to your values. Cultivate your capacity of foresight by leveraging your capacity for hindsight. Now imagine looking back from the future. This is a timeline. Reflecting on what you would wish you had done differently, perhaps in this moment, as you are here now, what are you doing? Are you multitasking? What other choices are you making? Maybe you're eating, maybe you're doing moving, right? So from the future, looking back at the choices you are making now, is there anything you wish you would have done differently? And these exercises can be done in a team as well. A team can sit down and go to the future and look back to some choice they're about to make. And Imagine what would have been the best choice and what would be the consequences of the choices they're about to make or they usually make. So what is, expand on this inquiry. What is one area of your work or life? So in energy, so eating, sleeping, moving, resting, in love or relationships, including yourself, in learning. You could use some wisdom. So let's play the flash forward game by imagining a future self who looks back to this moment of choice as if it has gone by, it's in the past. 
And then using this perspective, we can weigh the options we had. Focusing on what really matters more than anything else. Other questions that are useful, again, it's exactly the same thing. I'm just rephrasing to broaden one sense of what we're talking about. What do we need to do so that within three years, we can say this current crisis was the best thing that could have happened to our company? This is a question that is used as a starting ritual at the beginning of meetings, company meetings, when decisions will be made. Then the team asks, what do we need to do now? So three years from now, whatever this crisis we are busy with or this project or this challenge or difficulty that we are resisting, in three years, we'll be able to say it's the best thing that happened for us. What are we going to make of it so we can? What is your future self thanking you for? This is how I spin it around, my version of flash forward. So I'm doing this now. And before I do it, I can ask, what is my future self thanking me for? And that helps me realize how I want to show up. So again, continuing exactly the same question. What is one area of your work or life so reflect on your own work, your own life, where you could use some guidance to choose between options. What will bring you in greater line, um, alignment, alliance with yourself? What's the next right thing that will add value? So when you're there choosing what to eat at the buffet or wherever, What's the best choices that will add value? And flash forward will help you do that. This is a quote, these words, iconic words, you might recognize them. When I was 17, I read a quote that went something like, if you live each day as it was, you're lost. Someday, you'll most certainly be right. It made an impression on me. And since then, for the past 33 years, I've looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? And whenever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, I know I need to change something. Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death. Leaving only what is truly important Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. And this was by Steve Jobs in 2005 in his Stanford commencement address. And then as we start going towards the end of our session, you saw in one of the initial slides, a journal, my top five values and how to put it into practice today. On this course, the sage wisdom or powers, empathy, you could put your value of compassion, you could put kindness, you could put love, you could put any virtue, yeah. And visualize the child is one of the ways we practice it to connect to this empathy and remind us this is important, right? And this is what we're learning on this course. 
curiosity, this explorer mindset, beginner's mind. If someone's been difficult, if we bring curiosity, this virtue, how it changes the, sit, the setting. And playing the fascinated anthropologist helped us with that. Creativity is a virtue of mine that I bring to innovate. And I play the yes and game. And today we're looking at navigate. And this is about authenticity. It's about being true to myself, focusing on what matters, so self-mastery. And we're playing the flash forward. And I will offer also a eulogy exercise shortly. And then zest, enthusiasm are values of mine. And you will see this in the next session on activate, which is a sage power. And where we play preempt the saboteurs. And I also have a game called Odysseus Oats. The eulogies game. So that's us in the future, the last day of our lives. What do we imagine is being said? What would we love? What do you hope will be said in celebration of you when your praises are being sung? And that brings us to the end. I want to thank you. What we have been doing is inquiry. We ask questions. We come at that question from multiple angles. So we can just go deeper into that experience. We get ready to receive insight. That's why it helps to activate the yes brain to do this. We write down the ideas so we can decide how we're going to Put those insights in practice. So, for example, the virtue of creativity. How will I implement that? And one of the ways is through a certain game. Again, thank you very much for joining me in this session. I will return us to our main screen. So as you go about your day today, think of several moments. You will return to your journaling and complete the session on your own. You can return to the video and listen to the question and then press pause. Where today do you have choices to make? And you want to remember your purpose, your meaning, what you stand for. And then in those situations, imagine going forward and looking back. What would you be proud of having decided? What is that future self thanking you for? What are the best choices you want to make? So may you stay well. May you stay safe. Again, thank you for practicing with me. I look forward to our next practice session where we will use activate. We will move into action.